In our last section, 11.4, we're going to use known Taylor series to evaluate things such as limits or definite integrals and so on. Make sure you have this table handy. Uh, most of what we do in this section will be based off of this table. So this table is really nice, table 11.5. What it gives you is it gives you the function, it gives you the expansion, it gives you the Taylor series or the power series. Uh, it also gives you interval of convergence. In example one, we want to evaluate this limit. If we go ahead and we plug in zero for x, we get the indeterminate form zero over zero. So something you can do is you could try L'Hopital's and take the derivative and reevaluate the limit. You'll find that if you do L'Hopital's, it would be five times, which is okay. You could use L'Hopital's five times. But instead, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look at that table and I'm gonna find what's bothering me here, which is sine. The rest of it is polynomials, they're really nice. So if I replace sine, with the series on the table, it would look like this. We would have the limit as x goes to zero. Uh, sine would be x minus x to the third over three factorial plus, because it alternates x to the five over five factorial, uh, minus, and I could continue on. I'm going to go to maybe x to the 9. So x to the 7 over 7 factorial plus x to the 9 over 9 factorial minus and so on. So I replace sine with the series expansion, but I also have this minus x plus x to the third over 6. All of this is over x to the fifth. However, what you should notice is the first term x will cancel with the minus x outside of the parentheses. And the second term, the minus x to the third over three factorial is simply six. So the minus x to the third over six cancels with the plus x to the third over six on the outside of the parentheses. Let me rewrite this limit. As x goes to zero, it becomes x to the fifth over five factorial minus x to the seven over seven factorial plus x to the nine over nine factorial minus and so on. And the rest of it's gone. All of this is over x to the fifth. So if we simply divide the top and bottom terms by x to the fifth, in the denominator, I'll get one, so I don't have to write that. In the numerator, if I divide each of those terms by x to the fifth, it becomes the limit. As x goes to, oh, I was putting infinity instead of zero. As x goes to zero, of 1 over 5 factorial minus x squared over 7 factorial plus x to the 4th over 9 factorial and so on. And now you could see as x goes to zero, all the terms after the first term are all gonna go to zero. So this limit is simply one over five factorial, which equals one over 120. So again, we could use the power series or we could simply do L'Hopital's in this case, it would be five times. In example two, we have this function, e to the negative x. And I chose this example because this is something that will come up in your my lab. And I just want to explain what the wording means because sometimes it's a little bit confusing. 
So part A says differentiate the Taylor series about zero for the function. So we're assuming that a, our center A is zero. In part A, I notice that e to the negative x is similar to e to the x. Looking at the table, this is a series from k equal to zero to infinity of x to the k over k factorial. Or expand it out, it would be 1 over 0 factorial plus x over 1 factorial plus x squared over 2 factorial plus x to the third over 3 factorial. I think I'm going to take this out to x to the fourth over 4 factorial and so on. So e to the negative x is similar to e to the x. All we have to do in our series is substitute negative x in place of x. So first of all, to differentiate the Taylor series about 0 for our function, we have to first find the Taylor series. So you want to compare your function to something from the table so you can write the series for your function. So if we look at e to the negative x, all we have to do is simply replace x with negative x. Expand it out, we get 1 over 0 factorial, which I really don't have to write, uh, plus negative x over 1 factorial plus negative x squared over 2 factorial plus and so on. So this is actually going to turn into an alternating series. Oops, I need the 4 on the outside. But I have my series. It says to differentiate this series. So what I'm doing is I'm taking the derivative with respect to x of this series, which is equal to the derivative with respect to x. And I'm going to use the expanded form because it's easier for me to take the derivative. The 1 over 0 factorial, um, maybe, well, I'll keep it that way. The derivative would just be 0. It's a constant. Um, notice that this would be a minus x over 1 factorial plus x squared over 2 factorial minus x to the third over 3 factorial plus x to the fourth over 4 factorial and so on. And then when I take the derivative here on the right hand side, the derivative of 1 over 0 factorial is a constant so that's just 0 minus, this becomes um, 1 over 1 factorial. I'm going to leave it in this way because I want to see if, uh, if I can recognize a pattern. And then the derivative for the next term would be plus 2x over 2 factorial minus 3x squared over 3 factorial plus 4x to the third over 4 factorial, and so on. And I'm going to ignore this zero term. So it seems reasonable to start my series at probably 1. I'm starting with a negative and I'm alternating. So I know I'm going to have an alternating series. I just have to figure out my k value. If I do start at 1, and the reason why I'm starting at 1 is I notice that the coefficient on the top is 1, 2, 3, 4. And on the bottom, the factorial is 1 factorial, 2 factorial, 3 factorial, 4 factorial. So I see that if I start with k is equal to 1, then my first term is negative. So the negative 1 can be to the k power. Uh, I can see that the coefficients 1, 2, 3, 4 would just be k. And then times x to the, I have to figure out the exponent on my x. 
Uh, so the first term is actually 1 times x to the 0. The next term is 2 times x to the 1. So it looks like the exponents on the x are 1 less than. So maybe I can write that as k minus 1. And this is all over k factorial. And that is the series. So just a caution that on my lab, uh, you may be given a multiple choice question where you have to choose the appropriate series. If your series doesn't look like any of the choices, you may have to play around with it a little bit. So for example, I could notice that in the denominator, k factorial is actually k times k minus 1 factorial. So I could cancel the k in the numerator and the k in the denominator. So I could also write this series as k equal to 1 to infinity of negative 1 to the k x to the k minus 1 over k minus 1 factorial. I could also re-index. Oftentimes we like to write our series beginning with 0. Notice that e to the x started with k is equal to 0, so maybe I can kind of match it up to that one. If I subtract 1 from my starting k value, I add 1 to the k values in my expression, which means this becomes negative 1 to the k plus 1. And then this will just be x to the k over k factorial. All three of these are correct. I think I'm going to just look at this last one. It seems like the most efficient way to write my uh, series. So we differentiated the Taylor series and I found the pattern and I wrote my Taylor series. Let's look at B. Let's look at B. We want to take the we want to identify the function represented by the differentiated series. So all it's saying is, now that you have this series, what is the function that goes with it? Well, this is so simple. Going back to part A, the derivative of e to the negative x is equal to this series. So if we simply look at the derivative of e to the negative x, which is negative e to the negative x, we're done. On my lab, they don't do that. Uh, they do it a different way, and I'll discuss that when we look at part c. Part c, it says give the interval of convergence for the power series for the derivative. And all we have to do is compare it to the interval of convergence to the power series for e to the x. So remember, e to the x equal to k equal to 0 to infinity of x to the k over k factorial has an interval of convergence absolute value of x less than infinity from the table which is negative infinity to positive infinity. So if we can get our series to look like this series, we could figure out the interval of convergence is. Our series, uh, or our derivative, which is negative e to the negative x, is equal to, and I'll use the last one, because it matches up. It starts at k is equal to zero similar to e to the x. And ours was negative 1 to the k plus 1 x to the k over k factorial. So it doesn't quite look like what I have for e to the x. What I want to do is to get some expression to the k power over k factorial. So I have to deal with this negative 1 to the k plus 1. So notice that 
This is negative 1 to the k times negative 1. So I'm going to pull a negative out. This becomes negative 1 to the k x to the k over k factorial, which is still not quite what I want. But now that the negative 1 and the x have the same exponent, I could bring them together and write this as negative x to the k over k factorial. Notice that this series is, all I have to do is substitute negative x for x in my e to the x series. This is e to the negative x. So this series e to the negative x, now multiplying it by negative 1, will not change the interval of convergence. The interval of convergence is with respect to the series, not any constants on the outside. So this series will converge as long as replacing x with negative x, as long as this is less than the interval of convergence for e to the x, which is infinity. And now clearly you could see that the absolute value of negative x is simply the absolute value of x. So my interval of convergence is still going to be negative infinity to positive infinity. So what I just did here, when I tried to get the series to look like the e to the x series, that's actually what your my lab will do for part b. Instead of simply taking the derivative, they will try to get the series to get this series to look like e to the x. And then note that that would be negative e to the negative x. They kind of do it a little bit backwards. Let's move on to some more examples where we would be using that table or Taylor series or power series. Example three, we want to approximate the Taylor series to find the first four non-zero terms of an infinite series that is equal to e to the x or e, square root of e, sorry. So that's going to be equal to e to the 1 half. Again, if I look at e to the x, which is equal to the series from k is equal to 0 to infinity of x to the k over k factorial, then all I have to do is simply replace x with 1 half. And e to the 1 half is going to be equal to the series k is equal to 0 to infinity of 1 half to the k over k factorial. Finding the first four terms, start with k is equal to 0, and we have 1 plus k is equal to 1 gives me 1 half plus, uh, I can't do that in my head, 1 half squared over 2 factorial plus 1 half to the third over 3 factorial. So here's my first four non-zero terms, which tells me that e to the 1 half is approximately equal to 1 plus 1 half plus 1 fourth divided by 2 1 eighth plus putting it in my calculator, I get 1 over 48. So we found the first four non-zero terms, and our approximation would tell us that e to the 1 half is approximately equal to, I'll write this as a fraction, 79 over 48, and I just plug that in my calculator. Notice that I didn't have to come up with the series, I just looked at the table. Again, so now that we have the table, life is beautiful. An example four, this is just sort of a fun example. I'm going back to my differential equations. Example four, I have this differential equation that the derivative of y minus y is equal to zero. I have the initial condition that y of zero is equal to two. So my variable here is t, so that means this zero is when t is equal to zero. I can look at that as my center. 
So if it was y of 1 is equal to 2, I could say my center is 1. In part A, I want to find a power series for the solution of the differential equation. So remember, the solution for a differential equation is the function. So I have to figure out what that is. So let's see. Power series. I need the first derivative, second derivative, third derivative, and so on. I need to recognize a pattern and then write my series. So I'm going to go back to this equation here in the beginning. Notice that if I were to add y to both sides, I get the first derivative is equal to the function. Oops, well, it helps if I write it as a function. Whee. Taking the derivative on both sides, I have the second derivative is equal to the first derivative. Taking the derivative again, I have the, the third derivative is equal to the second derivative. And the reason why I'm doing that is because this gives me my pattern. The function, which is my solution, is equal to, for any t value, is also equal to the first derivative. But notice that the first derivative is also equal to the second derivative. And the second derivative is also equal to the third derivative, and so on. So when I write my series for the solution of my differential equation, y of t, it's going to be equal to, go back to your Taylor series, f of a plus f prime of a times x minus a plus, and so on. Here a is 0, and our function f is y. So this would be y of 0 plus y prime of 0 times a variable is t plus second derivative evaluate at 0 t squared over 2 factorial plus third derivative evaluated at z, uh, 0 times t to the third over 3 factorial and so on. And we know that y of 0 is 2. We also know that the first derivative is equal to the function, so y prime of 0 is also 2 plus. And the second derivative is equal to the first derivative, so y double prime of 0 is also 2. And third derivative is also 2. Oh, maybe I should have left it as factorials. It might be easier to see the pattern. Uh, so notice that this is t to the 1, the second term over 1 factorial. This would be t to the 0 over 0 factorial. And the pattern looks like y of t is equal to the sum. Uh, let's see, if I start with k is equal to 0 for the exponents on t, I could do it that way, or I could start with k is equal to 1 to describe the coefficients. Oh no, I see 0 is better. Notice that the 2 is always constant, that doesn't change. So this is 2, t to the k if I'm starting at 0 over k factorial. Yeah, that works. Uh, and you can keep the 2 in there if you want, or you could pull the 2 out. It really doesn't matter, because that 2 is simply a constant. So this would be our y of t. And that's what we were asked to find. We were asked to find the power series for the solution y of t. And then we move on to part b, which is identify the function represented by this power series. So we want to take this power series and write its function representation. 
I think I'm going to use this second piece. I'm going to look at 2 times the series from k equal to 0 to infinity of t to the k over k factorial. And notice that that's very similar to e to the x, which is k equal to 0 to infinity. So remember the index has matters here when you're comparing. If your series that you're comparing it to starts at 0, then your series has to start at 0. This is x to the k over k factorial. Uh, so to figure out what this series represents, it's going to be equal to 2 times. All I have to do is substitute t for x. And this is 2 times e to the t. That's the function represented by our solution to the differential equation. Going back to differential equations, we found that some special differential equations did take that form for its solution. Uh, we also found uh, equations like this when we're looking at separable differential equations. So this is just another way to find the solution for a differential equation. Uh, it's a little bit tedious, and honestly, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. In example 5, I'm going to be looking at a definite integral. And we're going to uh, approximate the definite integral by retaining enough terms so that the error is less than 10 to the negative 4. So first of all, my integrand is sine of x squared. So the square is only to the x. It has nothing to do with the sine. And without a calculator, I can't really evaluate this integral. If I do a substitution on the x squared, I still have an x that I can't get rid of. Uh, I can't use any of the identities because the square is just to the argument x. It's not, to, it's not sine squared of x. So I'm kind of stuck. What I'm going to do is compare this to the expansion on the table of sine. And the expansion for sine is x to the 1 over 1 factorial minus x to the 3 over 3 factorial plus x to the 5 over 5 factorial and so on. It will turn into x minus x to the third, I'll keep the factorial, 3 factorial, plus x to the 5 over 5 factorial. Let me see if x to the 7, that would probably be enough for me to recognize the pattern. So I'm just going to look at the expanded form, and then I'm going to substitute x squared wherever I see x in the expanded form. In my integral, I can now replace the sine squared with x squared minus, if I replace the x with an x squared, so x squared to the third power would be x to the six over three factorial, plus this becomes x to the 10 over five factorial minus x to the 14 over seven factorial plus, and so on. And this I can integrate term by term. Integrating term by term, I have x to the third over three minus x to the seven over seven times three factorial, and I'll just leave it that way. x to the 11 times 11 or 11 times 5 factorial minus x to the 15 over 15 times 7 factorial plus and so on. Evaluated from point 0.2 to 0. So now substituting, substituting in point 0.2 for x, this becomes point 0.2 to the third over 3 minus point 0.2 2 to the 7 over 7 times 3 factorial 
plus 0.2 to the 11 over 11 times 5 factorial minus 0.2 to the 15 over 15 times 7 factorial and so on minus putting in 0 in for x all the terms go to 0 so I don't really need that this is the value of this integral. Again, I haven't used a calculator yet. Notice that this is an alternating series. So I'm supposed to figure out how many terms I need for my approximation so that my error is less than 10 to the negative 4. But in an alternating series, we had this property from 10.6 saying that the absolute value of the remainder using the first n terms, and remember the absolute value of the remainder, that's our error, is going to be less than or equal to the next term, the n plus 1 term. So big picture, at some point, one of the terms are going to be less than the error, right? which in our case is 10 to the negative 4 or 0 0.0001. So all I have to do is look at the terms above and compute the value. So the first term, 0.2 to the third over 3. Now if I was not using a calculator, remember this is why this was created, it's still doable, but it's very tedious, so I am going to use a calculator. And this first term is going to be 0 0.002, and the 6 keeps repeating, so I'll go to 7. I'll round it. Uh, that's greater than 10 to the negative 4. So I'm going to look at the next term, which would be point. 2 to the 7 over 7 times 3 factorial. And when I plug this into my calculator, I get 3 times 10 to the negative 7. Or in other words, again, this is uh, an approximation. 0 0.123456 with a 3, that's definitely less than 10 to the negative 4. So this value represents your n plus 1 term. So everything less than that will give me an error less than 10 to the negative 4 because I'm not looking at the n, point, n plus 1. I'm looking at the n, which in our case would just be this first term. If I compute this first term, it will be an approximation to my integral with an error less than 10 to the negative 4. So my integral from 0 to point 0.2 of sine of, I'm going to put the parentheses on, the x squared, is going to be approximately equal to point 0.2 to the third over 3. Again, once upon a time, Somebody had to do this by hand, which it's still doable, uh, which in turn, which would be approximately 0 0.00267, uh, with an error less than 10 to the negative 4. And you can always check this. So what I would like to do is note that we found that all we had to do is use the first term to accurately approximate that integral. Notice that you can use any term after that as well. So let's just say, for argument, what if, now this is not true, but what if when we did our approximations for our terms, what if when we did the 0.2 to the 7 over 7 times 3 factorial. What if that still was not less than 10 to the negative 4? Then we would compute the next term, which is 0.2 to the 11 over 11 times 5 factorial. 
and then you would find that this is less than 10 to the negative 4. Well, in that case, when you do your approximation, remember it was positive minus the next term. You would compute those that expression, and that would be the approximate value for your integral. So again, find the term that's less than the error, and then all the terms that came before would be your approximation. In example six, and this is going to be our last example where we get to use that table. What if we were given a series and from that series we had to identify the function that represents it? Well, in this case you would look at the table and you would try to find a series in that list that's similar to the series you have. In my case, in part A, this is similar to the series k equal to 0 to infinity, negative 1 to the k, x to the k. The only difference between the series in part A and this series is that there's a 4 to the k in the denominator. And this series from the table is equal to 1 over 1 plus x. So if I can get my series to look like that series, I can identify the function uh, that it's represented by. So notice our series from k equal to 0 to infinity the x to the k and the 4 to the k have the same exponent. So I can com combine these to be x to the 4 over k, which is similar to that series, except for instead of x, I have x over 4, which is fine because we had theorems that said all we had to do was combine this by plugging in for x, x over 4. So this function is 1 over 1 plus x over 4, which is a complex fraction. So actually, I would simplify by multiplying everything by 4 to get a function as 4 over 4 plus x. So we're going in a different direction. We're going from the series to the function. In part B, I have another series, and it's similar to the series that we had in part A. The only difference is notice that the exponent on 4 is k plus 1. Now remember, when you're comparing it to a given series, it has to match. So the k value has to start at the same value. The series I'm comparing it to starts at k is equal to 0, so I don't have to worry about re-indexing. I'm fine. The negative 1 to the k matches. It's x to the k over 4 to the k plus 1 that does not match. Notice that I could rewrite this as negative 1 to the k x to the k over 4 to the k times 4. And now the x to the k over the 4 to the k, they match, and I can combine them. Well, what about the 4? It's a constant. I can simply pull it out. And this becomes negative 1 to the k, x over 4 to the k. So the negative 1 fourth stays. This is, we found this in part a, to be 4 over 4 plus x. So we can cancel the 4 in the numerator and denominator. And the function for part b is simply 1 over 4 plus x. And that's it for 11.4. It's also the last section that we're covering. Uh, so we're done.